welcome back to another episode of Art from the Madness. Today I am super excited because we are going to be having Eric on the show. And Eric is actually a PE teacher. Now I know what you're thinking. Art from the Madness, a PE teacher? He's a PE teacher who created his own clothing line for his students. Now, I know this might be a little bit of a question to all of you. How does this fit into Art of the Madness? Well, watch the interview and find out. So now, let's welcome Eric to the show. Everybody, let's welcome Eric to the show. Hi, Eric! Hi! So as I was saying, Eric is actually a PE teacher who started his own clothing line. So let's get into the man and figure out exactly how he became a teacher and what inspired his line. Eric, how did you become a teacher? Well, uh, teaching wasn't always my first option. It was actually, uh, I actually wanted to be a physical therapist. And uh, once I got it to the collegiate program over at Willow International, I did my time there and I transferred over. I even transferred as a physical therapist major. There was me and like three people that were in my little cohort. Um, as anybody would know, uh, physical therapy is actually a real big program at Fresno State. And it's actually one of the best on the West Coast, considering like everything from... Um, I want to say from uh, Midwest over at least. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was going to do that and I even registered for it and I ended up going and registering for a PE class because it was a required class for my field. And that was Kinesis 120, which was motor development. And within the first Second test, I just realized, I was like, I'm going to switch over to PE. PE was always, I remember in, in high school when I was in PE, I was like, I wouldn't mind being a PE teacher, but I just put that on the back burner and, and you know, it actually been, uh, it actually turned out for the best for me, I feel like. Yeah, I don't know anybody who's more passionate about teaching children to work out because it's such an important part of everyone's lifestyle. Everyone should get some physical, you know, outside activity and people really don't put the emphasis on it like when we were young I feel like we were thrown outside to play and then you were like come back when the sun comes down you know and I, I really don't feel like people value it like they used to well nowadays it's a little bit more hard especially in the times that we're in right now right now uh mm -hmm. or fearful for their lives and stuff like that so there, I see a lot less um activity especially on my behalf I I even haven't even gone out and 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 did my I, I need to start again but it's you know just the way that the government's working and all this other stuff it kind of makes it difficult for me to even test it so yeah so let's get into a little bit about the clothing line mm -hmm. and what what really inspired you to branch out from PE teaching to the arts to clothing to that I always took it as you saw kids not as excited to work out in the clothes that they were in and wanted to give them something fresh something to make them feel good about themselves on the outside so they'll want to push themselves working out uh, but give me your take what inspired you well that's partially it I um and that's where it kind of started I kind of designed shirts for the school but for our sports program so so that way uh in our district kids have to wear college shirts uh, they have to wear collared shirts and there's no way around it. The only way around it is if you have a shirt that's, uh, that has uh, their logo somewhere on it. And um, that's, that was my way in. I started designing shirts my first year. And uh, I still have all those shirts. But the, but the looming thing for me was that I did not want to stock up on other people's shirts. And I just wanted to just brand myself. I felt like that was just a better way for me to go about it. And, you know, uh, in the beginning of the year, I actually came up with these shirts. Uh, my good friend, uh, Bondo, which I'm sure you'll be having on this sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, he actually designed the logo for me. And uh, I'm a 90s baby. So I, uh, so I, des I, I asked him to do these little uh, graffiti in the background. Yeah, like, almost like the Simpsons where Bart's like doing the graffiti on yeah, the chalkboards. Actually, if you look at it, there's El Barto right there. <laughs> there's the Stussy symbol and there's the 3D. Everybody was obsessed. Oh, with yeah, the 3D cubes. I remember yeah. that. 
No, I told them exactly where I wanted my brand to go. I wanted to be more 90, uh, 90s oriented because I felt like that was, we kind of touched on it a little bit. You know, we were outside, we were doing a lot more things. And, um, and basically I created it for myself. And, it, and um, what launched it into me doing it for kids was the fact that um, um, a lot more kids, just the popularity that I would have among the kids, they would always see me and they would always want me, uh, they were just like, I want that shirt, I want that shirt. And then parents started asking me about it. And then I just ended up um, designing my own website. But there's a couple of things, like I said, I was designing shirts and stuff like that, but it, it didn't, it didn't actually click for me until I started designing uh, business cards. And one of the, uh, one of the first business cards I designed for was uh, Cassidy. Uh, you'll have her on later. Yeah. She's um, on next week's episode. <laughs> yeah. So she, I, I designed a card for her specifically tailored to what she wanted and uh, we unfortunately didn't go that way, but it worked out for her later on and you'll find out next yeah, week. Yeah, on her episode. <laughs> uh, uh, but I did do my own card. Gorgeous. Uh, that's a gold foil on the outside. It's yeah. super clean, but it's just basically to get the get it across. Fizz Ed 559. Yeah. So I just, I love that play too on Fizz Ed, you know, that. Yeah, and I, I talked to. I talked to, um, I, I was going to go through my t-shirt guy, but for some reason he kind of fell out. Uh, I don't know if he's just not doing his business anymore or whatever, but I was, I was talking to him and I was, I, cause usually we spell it P H Y S fizz. Yeah. And I was just like, and that's, that's more school school. Like, you know, cause you'd see it on your PE uniforms, like, yeah. Physical education. And, and I was just going to put F I Z cause it's kind of just like more slangish and whatever. And he's like, and my t-shirt guy was like, yeah. But I don't, I don't think you should go that route. And I was like, why? He's all because when I think of F I Z, I think of soda. I think of like fizz, like fizzy. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, well, uh, he's like, P H would sound a lot better. And I was all P H I Z, and he's all definitely. So uh, we ended up going that route, and uh, that shirt that I showed you, that was my first route into um, my design, and a lot of the kids wanted it. And after that, I, I think I have, I think I have like. I don't know. I don't like five or six different designs. Different types of t-shirts. Yeah. I mean, obviously this one's my favorite. I'll insert a picture. Um, and they're so comfortable. Like they're super soft. And, um, the colorway was specific. Um, that one is, uh, I wanted it more of a neon with that one because like that's right around, like if you think of fresh prints, which is one design that I'm kind of messing with. Um, you think Fresh Prince of having like neon yellow, purple. Oh yeah, all that. super I, bright colors yeah, that. We really wanted to go around that route and um, and around that color is specific to that that time in that era, so. Oh yeah, that get outside, dance with your friends, beatboxing, well, the I little never cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the trying to do those moves like you see on the TV where you're like hand sand, you're little do chop chop legs. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I I feel like I grew up in such a different world. Like when I see little kids now and they're just like on those tablets and on those things, I'm like, when I was a little kid, like you couldn't keep me from playing on swings, you know, yeah. climbing trees, playing in my dollhouse outside, getting wet, running through the mud. Um. Yeah, and it'd be surprising. Like kids, uh, first thing what I want, they want to ask me once they get to know me. Oh, do you have PS, PS uh, PlayStation or do you have Xbox? And I'm like, oh, I have a PlayStation. Like, add me on PlayStation. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're somebody. <laughs> no. <laughs> once I leave this place, I don't know you. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what you look like. It, it really is such a different world for teachers. I mean, especially like young teachers. Uh, When we were kids, our teachers were like almost majestic in a way that they were just like these people that only exist at school. We didn't think that they had a personal life. Like we never thought about anything outside of what they were in our classrooms. And when you got to see them outside at a restaurant or something, you were so stoked. It was like you saw a unicorn. You're like, oh, my gosh, Miss Nettle. Yeah, like. 
that's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, I ended up seeing one of my high school teachers when I was working and I was just like, oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> You're like, you outside. live outside. Yeah, You're was, real. You alive right now? I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, times have changed. Uh, uh, the whole old paradigm where, you know, um, teachers were looked up to, uh, yeah. teachers uh, earned, uh, had the respect of the students immediately uh and that's something that my mom instilled in me and i'm sure your mom instilled in yeah, you like, that's definitely. just something that we just didn't mess with um unfortunately that's a different that's a different a different time and 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 now um i have to play it a little different i can't just come off as i'm older to you you have to respect me type of way but obviously no, but it's I'll just different honestly i don't it, it's so Obviously, I went to private school, kinder through eighth grade, for all of you who don't know this, I went to a Catholic school, and I grew up, um, obviously, in a completely different environment than public schools, but you did, you had this respect for your teachers, and, you know, a teacher, or I guess my priest, Monsignor, is actually the one who inspired me to become a writer, um, he said I was going to be a philosopher someday, he said, I, I, yeah, that's what I said too. He said that I was going to be a philosopher, rest in peace, Monsignor Morton. Um, and I respected him so much. He was so magical to me. My old teachers, Miss Kennedy and Miss Nettle, still to this day, I, when I think of certain things that I learn, I think of them and I think of the lessons that they instilled in me as a young girl. And so I definitely think it's a different relationship between teachers and students nowadays because. I could go to Miss Nettle or Miss Kennedy even when I wasn't in their, their classes anymore and, and run or my computer teacher, Miss Mason, when I was feeling sad or anything. It just, it was such a different give and take between teachers and students because we knew that line. There was a boundary that you couldn't cross. And I, and I don't see that as much in schools and especially with all the, the bad media that teachers get nowadays, it's very hard, I think, to be a young teacher what it is i mean the, the the field is severely underpaid so um not just for pe but all departments and i feel like as though they don't get the respect they deserve but i've been seeing a lot more since uh, since this uh outbreak and this pandemic has been happening where I've, I've been seeing a lot more parent support because they're just like now i have to see what you guys have to put up <laughs> on a basis and pe is its own little it's its own little world because uh, yeah. where classrooms have like 30 people, I think the most I had in a class was 75. Dang, so that's a lot. Just to manage, yeah, just to manage not only 75 people, but 75 kids. Oh my gosh, all hyped up and energetic and ready to play. It's opposite. The kids are usually lazy now and they and uh, they want to be on their phones and all this other stuff. So that's where, that's where I got to get with my energy and uh, and to bridge that gap is is, is difficult because obviously it, it it shouldn't just be one person that will want you to work out yeah. and um i i tried to bridge that gap for all the teachers you know it's just like teachers are teachers even the teachers that are uh um are at the school they're certified to do physical education themselves so um it's just, I mean, it's, it's kind of heartwarming because I know they want me there, but it's also disheartening because it's just like, you know, you can have this much fun with your original teacher. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's, it, it's, it's like I'm saying, it's, it's bringing that electricity because of how lazy they want to be because of what they don't want to do. And you'll get a lot of resistance. I got a lot of resistance once I first got there. Um, once, once I moved from middle school down, let's just say middle school, it was basically under my thumb. A lot of students would always tell me, you know, when I think of school, the only person I think of is you, or the first thing I think of is you. Uh, I went to a couple basketball games and stuff like that. And I'm just watching because I like to support my kids. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, uh, after school I would go and I would even stay until uh, the very end, which is like seven, eight o'clock. I don't have to stay there, but I want the kids to know that I'm always going to be there to support them. And, 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 um, a lot of those kids do. And I'm just sitting back and I'm just enjoying the games. And uh, one of the students walked up and we were talking for a little bit and they looked at me and they're just like, this is still your gym. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just like, oh, dear. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm, I'm a very silly guy. 
Uh, I could do stupid things just to be stupid. Um, but you're very passionate. And I feel like that's what probably the kids pick up on is that passion. Because when you talk about your physical education, when you talk about your kids, you know, that you work with all the time and you talk about their strides, their struggles, their triumphs, it's like you're rooting for them as much as they're rooting for themselves. And it's incredible Sometimes to have a teacher do that. Not even rooting for themselves. Sometimes they don't even have anybody rooting for them. And that's that. Yeah. Um, and especially, especially, uh, I know that there's a lot of um, disconnect. Um, I ch and one of the biggest things that I feel like a teacher can ever do is try to connect with their students. Like when we were younger, we, they didn't have to connect because they didn't need to. That's just something that they didn't need to do because they already earned our respect and they can just be like, I'm here to teach. Unfortunately, nowadays, the kids got to know, like, why? Why should I respect you? Like, yeah. what, like, what do you, you're not doing anything for me. So it's an extra step. Uh, but I mean, teachers are not just teachers, man. They're teachers, they're coaches, they're nurses, they're um, sometimes an older brother, sometimes an, an uncle when they need it. Like, yeah. Um, I've had several kids email me. Um, there is one kid in specific. He, um, I can't name any names or anything. He ended up moving districts and, um, and he, he reached out to me and he said that I feel like I can talk to you. I feel like there's, uh, I can't talk to anybody else, but I want to talk to you. You know, it's just like making that connection. I don't know what was going on with that kid's life and, and all this other stuff. So um, just knowing that I'm here for my kids and just know that um, they're accepting me into the life is, 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 is a payment in itself to be. Yeah. To be. And it, it's an incredible thing. And to make a clothing line that's more comfortable for kids to wear because it's soft, you know, and it's so cute. That. So the it's, other, so the other one, that's where, okay. So like I said, I ended up, uh, creating the brand because I, I just wanted to brand myself and the kids started asking about it. So I started making uh, t-shirts, which I already showed you. I showed you one. I ended up making beanies. That's cute. I like that one. Uh, it's the friends logo. Uh, inspired by friends. Inspired by friends. Um, beanies, stickers, uh, you name it. Uh, I, I, long sleeves, t-shirts. The cute little backpacks backpacks uh i haven't had a backpack made yet but it's uh there's one that i can get for champion you know it's just like something that the kids would really love to get yeah and, and uh it's just it's i haven't got everything off the ground yet i'm still testing a lot of things but i still get emails asking me when i'm gonna get that get that everything up so i'm rushing as hard as i can to get all that done and during this time so during this, you know, pandemic with everything going on, the current situation, how do you feel like it's inspiring you or allowing you to really, you know, create new things? Um, well, um, phys ed is just nothing but an extension of myself. So, mm -hmm. so basically I just take what inspires me. Now I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a, I'm a graffiti artist, like the shirt you're wearing. <laughs> But it's it's oh it's it's a beautiful thing just to look at. Yeah. A beautiful person who's wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but but uh, like I said, I'm working. I I've been working on um, Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince was a, a beloved show. Like I love oh that God, show. I love that show. Absolutely. Um, uh, this one was just more of a uh, Gucci inspired, and it's just basic. It, it was just easy, simple, quick to put together, and it's. Um, I know it's not a '90s theme, but it's just it's more streetwear. It's just something. Uh, like, I feel like that's very '90s. I feel like that's feel when like, it like hasn't really came out until like the 2000s. Okay, so like early 2000s, but it's definitely like th that was the theme around that time. I mean, it was uh, definitely something that everybody had for a cool minute. Mm -hmm. And then um, other things that I'm working on is I'm working on a NBA inspired one um NBA I love I love watching NBA I love playing uh, watch yeah I watch it but I love playing basketball um yeah so I got I got things in the work and it's, it's not necessarily things it's not like I'm reaching here these are things that I like yeah and, um things that the kids if they want it they want it if not that it's like there's you know it is what it is but I I it's 
it, it was a difficult thing because it's just like, I didn't want to sit there and, and try to make these for kids and, and have to sit there and manage money. But if, the, if that's really what the kids really want, then, and gravitated towards. Uh, and then that's something that I definitely want to try to provide for my kids that I, I try to go above and beyond for what I can do for those kids. I will try to do whatever it takes for, for them to, to come together and be a community and just uh, accept someone like me who's uh, someone who's from out of town, someone who's a weirdo, someone who's <laughs> Someone who creates dad jokes out of nowhere just to oh, get yeah, people laugh. Dad, yeah. like, that's just who I am. And um, those kids were a lot harder when I got there. They were like, they were just like. Yeah, suspicious. Who are you? And they didn't know who I was. And I've had a lot of people say, I didn't like you at first, but halfway through the year now, I know who you are and you're my favorite teacher. And it's just like. You know, it's just breaking down barriers so that everybody can be more accepting of everybody else and stuff like that. And, um, so, and, and obviously this isn't like Nike. This isn't like Adidas. This isn't like something that's going to cost, you know, yeah. oh, it's, uh, well, a Diamond Supply Co. or um, Supreme or whatever. Like, you know, it's not like there's a certain price tag on it. This is super affordable for everybody to wear. Uh, super affordable to the kids and the, and the community over there. And um, that way they have a talking point and it's just, they can't put anybody down because they're quote unquote poor. Um, that was a big thing when I first started is uh, like, I like wearing a lot of Nike, especially just because I like their shoe wear and all this other stuff. But um, it's just, I know that uh, when I came in from school, they told me uh, be aware of, putting down because of what they own and what they don't own and stuff like that. So that was a big plus too, is that this is all affordable for all the kids over there and yeah, they wanted to buy it for themselves. So affordable and cute and stylish, which isn't always like the easiest thing. Yeah. Um, so to touch a little bit on both your PE teaching and the clothing line longevity wise, where do you think that like this current pandemic, this, current world situation longevity is going to affect your clothing line and your PE teaching like do you feel because you you kind of touched a little bit on it and I think it was really great do you feel like you're going to get more respect now going back because parents now understand and they're going to be more on your side and then also with the clothing line longevity wise do you feel like this time has really impacted it um maybe not more respect for the PE teachers I do feel like as though they will uh, respect their homeroom teachers a little bit more. Um, PE teachers have this stigma about them, and that's something that I tried to squash myself. Um, PE teachers are identified as mean, identified as uh, always yelling at people, scolding people, and all this other stuff. And you know, I, I try my best to break that mold. But as far as my brand and 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 uh, teaching, um, as far as my clothing brand, I feel like right now the disconnect for my clothing brand is the fact that I'm not there. And if I'm not there, it's that old saying, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Um, but also I have no way to let people know. And I mean, I'm not going to email kids, you know, <laughs> you know, I just got to wait till next year. There's, there's no rush on my end. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not in it for the money. Like, yeah, this is something you more created for your kids. Exactly. And then like, like I'm not on a time crunch. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to sell any of my things. Um, if anything, I'm holding back on it because I want to perfect it. Yeah. Trying out colors. And he really right. does you guys, like he really puts in the time to order his own shirts, make sure the colors are vibrant, make sure that they don't wash off after a couple of washes, making sure that the type of material is good for the type of ink that he's using. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot goes into this more than you guys could realize. Um, and I think that that is super exciting and something you don't always hear about necessarily because when we buy things in stores or on, you know, Instagram ads or wherever you guys buy them from, you don't realize like all the work that goes behind the scenes, you know, and I, I think that that's super cool. And I, you know, I really appreciate it. I really love it. You know, it's super soft and comfortable and makes me feel good. And that's what it's all about, whether it's towards his teaching or his clothing line, he's trying to make people feel good about themselves. Absolutely. And I, and I think you're truly inspiring for that. 
I well, I try because to be honest, there's uh, kids that sometimes need someone to look up to. And, yeah. Uh, and um, those are the kids that I try to reach out to. Me being the goofy guy that I am, and it's because that I want to have the kids uh, be o- be okay with being as goofy as me. Um, not not in a rush to try to be this Mr. Cool guy and and cool girl and like all this other stuff. So, so what I do is I reach out to the kids who are usually shy, and by the end of the year, they're just like out and about. And I would always hear, "Wow, that kid was super quiet in the beginning of the year. What happened?" I'm just like, "Yeah." I wonder what happened. <laughs> so yeah. Um, no, and I I think that people like emailing you, talking to you, they really appreciate it. You know, they really understand the time the work the effort that you really put into things you know and even into this line which is why i really wanted you to be on the show because most of you were sitting here at home wondering how is being a pe teacher and a clothing designer art and if you don't see that it's art let me break it down for you our bodies are our outer artwork what we put on them what we put in them it's all a part of it and Working out, like I've always said in every video you'll ever see about my depression, anxiety, working out for me really helps with my mindset. It helps with my attitude. And I learned those skills from PE teachers as a child. I learned, you know, from my PE teacher, Miss Nettle, who's my PE teacher most of my life, you know, how to push my body, endurance, how to understand my body. You know, if you're breathing too hard, slow down, you know, pace yourself, don't just stop slowly work yourself down. And and there's a lot of things that I feel like I took away from my PE teachers as children, as an adult. And to this day, I still think about when I work out to boost my energy, to make myself feel better. And if that's not an art form, we're looking at the world the wrong way. And to have somebody so passionate about it in your classrooms, outside with you, running with you, pushing you, encouraging you, I think is very important. It's something that should be looked at as an art form Mm. and that's very much why i wanted eric to be on this show because i I knew nobody's more passionate about his pe teaching than him um and it's it's important that we look at things differently especially during this time when we're all sitting at home really reevaluating the lives that we were living before this before the pandemic before the changes you know to really look at the world in a different light Mm. and i you know I mean, what do you feel like your grand takeaway from this current situation doesn't have to be towards your art form or your PE teaching, but the grand takeaway from this pandemic? To be honest with you, I think it's it, it, it shows how easy it is to do nothing. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm perfect at any stretch of the imagination. I've obviously... Uh, just like every other American, you know, I just started to go to bed later, getting... Uh, waking up later in the day and um it it just lets people know that like you can easily just stop and do nothing but that's not a a life worth living um Mm -hmm. now i'm not saying i'm the most outgoing guy i'm not gonna say uh that i should do as much as i can but you know just a time and reflection just uh lets me know that you know i took it i took the outside for granted yeah, I definitely feel like it's always, it's way easier to do nothing when you don't have anything to wake up for in the morning. It, I mean, this show for me was what I really inspired me to wake up in the morning and to reach out to everyone that inspires me and everyone that I think is doing really cool stuff and give them a platform, I guess, to show their positivity. And I mean, I think I'm pretty lucky to know some pretty positive people and to know some pretty creative people. Um, yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, quite a few artists and all this other stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, I honestly, when I like started putting this all together, I was like, wow, I, I kind of know a lot of really cool people through my travels. I mean, if you don't know me all that well, I'm kind of a a very, I lived a very nomadic life. I kind of just pick up and go, and I was pretty lucky well, to meet a lot of really that's, cool people. I never thought that I would be one creating a brand. I never, you know, it's, I honestly, like I said, I started it in in the middle school. Um, I would create brands. I would create shirts that were already something else, which is kind of what I'm doing here, but I'm just getting, um, I'm just reimagining things. Uh, 
to fit the style that I want. But that's basically what I was doing in the middle school. And I just didn't think that I was going to go that route until I, then I started, uh, like I said, the, the business cards, I, I worked with uh, Cassidy very well on, on, her, on hers and she, she was blown away by it. She's like, dude, this is exactly what I wanted. And uh, you guys will see the product next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, like I said, I did my own business card, which you saw already. And yeah, which... you know, I just, I just like sitting there. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm the most clean person. I'm not going to say I'm the, I'm the most OCD person. Like, you know, it's just like, but once I get into like designing things, um, I get very into it. And it took me a while for Cassidy's. Uh, my Instagram is, uh, I'm sure she'll link it in the video. Um, yeah, I will have all of his, like his website, his Instagram, everything to follow him in the description box below. And that way that you can follow him or if you want to cop the merch, if you want to support, you know, and it, if you do cop merch, remember to take a photo of yourself and hashtag phys ed. So that way we can look at it. We can check it out. We can see how cute you look in your workout outfits. I mean, I always love that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah just uh yeah so that's that's all the stuff that inspired me um i ended up buying more programs uh just to get things right i had to buy like a 50 dollar program because i had to switch uh color color wheels um yeah. there's there's two different color wheels that i had to deal with the cmyk which is basically your printer ink and um what you use on your on your computer which is uh rgb which gives you those big bright colors like neon and all this other stuff. And unfortunately, uh, most printers don't use that. Uh, <laughs> can't, they can't, they can't get that neon color because it's, it's not part of the printer. And this is a direct -to garment. So they basically have like a large printer that they, they print out shirts. So I had to buy a program to make sure that they can fit within um, the ranges to their printers. The ranges, yes. So, um, so basically what he's saying is a lot of time, effort, thought, and passion went into this project and that he's constantly working on new things for his children and for you guys and for your children, wherever you're watching this, if they just want that little nineties flair, cause you know, <laughs> but I mean, I am super thankful to have you on the show, Eric. Thank you for sharing with us your stories, your passion, and make sure, like I said, to follow him. Um, is there any positive message that you want to put out before we go? Sleep. It's really important. Make sure you get your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys, for watching Art from the Madness. Make sure that you tune in next week for a brand new episode. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, to hit that like button so that I know that you like what I'm doing. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys.